The Lord be with you. And also with you. Delighted to see all of you here. It's for you. If you are a guest of the house, we especially want to welcome you. And if you have the courage to raise your hand, uh, we have the courage to give you a packet of material to uh, tell you more about who and what we are. So are there any visitors to the house on this day? We do have some guests here. They sneaked away from me, but I'm not going to give them one of these. They worshipped with us 57 years ago on the boardwalk. Oh, okay. So where'd you go? There they are. Ah, wow. Well, we're glad you came back. <laughs> We're sorry it's been 57 Pat. years, but okay. But Pat, Pat, yes, sir. down here, please. Oh, my goodness. Right over here, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, we welcome you. And we welcome you back. So, anyway, a couple of announcements, and we'll uh, quickly be on our way. Uh, one is you will receive an invitation this week to... Uh, download to be able to get onto a uh, electronic church directory, but also the monthly calendar. And so from now on, it's going to be as close as your smartphone. Uh, we will have people in the fellowship hall next Sunday and the Sunday after who can help you quickly load that down on your on your uh, smartphone or whatever phone you're using. Um, don't show up with something with a cord on it. Okay, <laughs> can't do that. Uh, but this will be very easy, and uh, we hope will be a, a, an aid to you, uh, not only in figuring out who, information about members, but also what's scheduled in uh, the next couple of days, couple of weeks, and so forth. You also should have received an online questionnaire. Uh, this is in regard to the congregational profile. This is part of the call process, and uh, the, the profile working group is seeking your input uh, before that profile finally goes to the desk of the bishop in a, probably a month and a half from now. So it's very important. Uh, we really want to hear what, what it is you're thinking about, what it is you're, uh, you want to see, what it is you, you understand about LCOS. Because all of this gets put into the, the hopper, if you will, uh, as a way of helping the bishop better understand who we are as a congregation so that he may be better informed in putting together a list of candidates uh, from which you will choose someone who will be your next pastor. So uh, please pay note, uh, pay attention to that questionnaire, and please respond to it honestly and openly. So. Also, Bible study resumes today at 9.30 in what I call the yellow room. I guess it's classroom two. Uh, and also, faith renewal classes will begin in that same room starting next Sunday in between services. Uh, and those classes will go for five weeks, uh, until September 24th, at which time we hope to be able to welcome a whole bunch of new members again <coughs> into the LCOS faith family. So if you'd like to sit in on that class, if you are transferring in, if you're thinking about becoming a member, or if you just want to dust off what you learned at confirmation 57 years ago, <laughs> please feel free to come and be part of that. Uh, tonight we are once again hosting Ukrainian refugee uh, here. Uh, this is uh, something we've been offering for Ukrainian refugees for the last couple of months. It's a once a month gathering. There are about 50 of them that come. Some of them drive all the way down from Wilmington uh, because they just want to be with each other. I hope you can appreciate the kind of very delicate position that Ukrainian refugees are in at this moment in this country. Uh, they are happy to be here, but obviously they're sad with what's going on at home. So uh, if you want to come and be part of that tonight, you're certainly welcome to. Begins about 6 o'clock, goes to about 7.30. Uh, just come and watch a whole bunch of people talk in a language that you don't understand, but it's obviously they're very happy of doing it. So uh, ISOP dinner is again Wednesday night, so we're continuing that for, I think, about another three weeks, if I remember right. Uh, so uh, again, outreach to the international students who are here. And last but not least, a very hearty thanks to those who were able to help with our Vacation Bible School this past week. So we didn't have many students, uh, but that was okay. Uh, what was important is that we showed them the love of Christ. We incarnated that, and we hope that we touched a couple of little hearts with, uh, with a lot of love. And uh, hopefully this is in preparation for, again, what, how could we do this next year? So it all goes on. I think that's enough. Uh, we are delighted to have a guest with us this morning, Anna Leanne. 
who will play it. And I think she is a student of Melvin Gruber, right? I think so. Well, thank you very much. And please <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> your teacher who's part of our faith family so uh, wonderful to have you both here if you're able let me invite you to rise as we begin our praise of the gracious God as always we make our strong beginning in the name of God the Father and of God the Son and of God the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. my brothers and sisters the writer of first John reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on how we have lived our lives in these last several days. then confess our sin to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I with great joy therefore forgive all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. We continue standing for the procession.
Sunday after Pentecost in the ordinary time and season of the church. And you give the lesson from the book of 1 Kings. And this is one of those lessons where to really understand it, you really have to back up and read a couple of chapters before it and a couple of chapters ever after it. But if I can put the Reader's Digest version on it here. So the great prophet Elijah is trying to stand strong for the Lord during the midst of a chaotic time in the northern kingdom of Israel and uh, where people are uh, not following the covenant. They're not, they're not looking to the God of Yahweh. They're looking to foreign gods instead. And Elijah is trying to 
remind them who they are and who they are. But he feels like he's out there kind of on his own. And the king of the Northern Kingdoms has made clear that she's going to kill him. And so he retreats to a cave and he tries to listen and tries to figure out where God is. And so he listens and first there is a, there's a, there's a wind and God isn't in the wind. And there's an earthquake and God isn't in the earthquake. And then there's a fire and God is not in the fire. And finally, after all of that, there's a still, small voice. And that's the voice of God. And this still, small voice is able to encourage and strengthen Elijah for the task that was before him. <coughs> These are good words to remember, for us to remember as well. Sometimes we expect God to show up in dramatic ways. And often it's a still, small voice. Sometimes it comes to us through the voice of another. Sometimes it comes to us through the reading of the word or prayer. Sometimes it comes to us in worship. But whenever that still small voice catches our heart, it encourages us just as it did Elijah. Let us let him listen to these words from 1 Kings 19. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. <coughs> the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, a knight of Hazael, king over Aram, also a knight Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and a knight Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mahoah, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elijah will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Faithful. 
fruitfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from From the pen of St. Paul as he writes to the first century church in Rome. Again, he's been trying to his whole letter to help them understand the difference between faith and works, law and gospel, that we're not made right with God because of what we do, but rather because of what God has already done for us in Christ. This was a radical new thought. In many ways, it still is. But in this lesson, he, uh, he tries to help them just narrow down the bottom line. What does the gospel find to mean? And listen for the words in the middle, and then you'll get it. Romans 10, beginning at verse 5. Moses writes about Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down? Or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead? But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning from the witness of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. 
Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. We join our hearts and our voices together in affirming that same faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. seated as we continue with him.
God's grace, God's mercy, and God's kind of peace rest deep, deep in your hearts, deep in your minds, this day and always because of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The text is a gospel lesson read a few moments ago. Let's go for the text. We are taught early on the power of four-letter words. You know these words. They're the kind of words we use to um, express ourselves when we're caught in traffic again driving on Route 1. <laughs> and sometimes we might say those words out loud. Sometimes we just mutter them under our breath. But, but when we say those words, they have great power. We don't use them in polite conversation, but we use them. But this one word, four-letter word, that's stronger than all the rest, and that's the word fear. From the time that we are children thinking that there are monsters under our bed until the time we lie dying in our bed, fear is always part of the human experience. It just sits patiently in the shadows of our minds and of our hearts. And sometimes fears come by things that have happened. Sometimes fears come from things that could happen. Sometimes fears come from things that actually never happened at all. But wherever they come from, fear has the power to paralyze our best intentions and keep us captive. Peter learned that lesson again this morning in our gospel lesson. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus immediately dismisses the disciples, saying, Start sailing, I'll catch up with you on the other side. And then he dismisses the crowds, and then finally he's by himself. He goes up to pray, which is what he had intended to do in the first place. And the disciples are out there on the Sea of Galilee. And my understanding is that sometimes storms can come up very quickly on that essentially lake and can overwhelm you. And they're out there. It's very early in the morning, the fourth watch between 3 a.m. and 6, that peculiar moment of the day when darkness and light seem to be dancing together. And they look out and they see the outline of a figure moving towards them. They scream, it's a ghost, they shrink back. But then they hear the familiar voice of Jesus saying, it's me, don't be afraid. Well, impulsive Peter decides that it's really Jesus, I want to go out there to be with him. Can I do that? And Jesus says, sure, come on. Bold, he steps out of the boat, he begins to walk, things are going just great, and then, Peter realizes just how high the waves are and just how strong the wind is. And suddenly all of his courage disappears. He begins to sink, asks for help. Jesus rescues him and then sort of gently chides him, saying, why is your faith so small? And then Peter and Jesus get into the boat, and at that moment, I think, the disciples are probably more afraid of the Jesus in the boat than they are of the storms around the boat because they don't know what to do with this guy. They stand in awe and finally in amazement, it says they worshiped him saying, you are the son of God. This is not a small concession for men of Jewish background who had been taught that the only one you worship is the God who is above you not in front of you. But when we focus again on Peter, such a fascinating character, and his words and his actions sound and are so much like ours. There are surely moments in life when we are incredibly courageous, when we feel like we can take on anything, 
usually about the time we're 16, as a teenager, that's when that starts to come, you know. You're invincible. You can do anything. But then stuff happens. And when stuff happens, usually suddenly and quickly, all of a sudden, the courage we thought we had and were so sure begins to whimper and to slink away. That's when we are reminded to remember the God that we believe in. To trust that faith has even more power than fear. We are called to simply believe that our faith can get us through the highest mount, highest waves and the deepest winds that life can throw at us. It's not wishful thinking, but it is holding on to something and someone who is much larger than our own good intentions. Many years ago, President then, Frank, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, made the famous statement, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. That was not a rhetorical statement just to be part of a cute speech. It was actually his own personal reaction to the fears that he was having, had not suddenly realized that now he was paralyzed and would be so for the rest of his life. I'm certainly not one to put words into Franklin Delano Roosevelt's mouth, but I think the principle that he was alluding to was that the only way you can overcome fear is by facing it head on. <clears throat> when you don't give it more power than it deserves. When you actually stand up to it, when you actually question it, when you actually wrestle with it the best that you can. That's when you begin to catch the corner on how to get around fear because if you let it control you, well, then you wind up later in life regretting all the time you wasted being fearful about things you couldn't change and people you couldn't fix. It takes courage to stand up to fear because it is powerful. But we believe faith is where that courage can be found. Because the strongest four-letter word that there is, stronger even than the four-letter word fear, is the four-letter word love. By Good Friday, it certainly appeared as if fear had won. But in the divine and mysterious and profound irony, God was using that very moment through which to manifest the love that would hold us secure forever. We are reminded of that every time we walk into this room. The Latin word for sanctuary is nave. It's also the word for boat. Because most sanctuaries are designed with a ceiling that looks like an upside down <coughs> boat. Because when we sit here looking up, it's as if we were in a boat. And some of the Roman, the Christian graffiti on the walls of the Roman catacombs in the first century were pictures of boats. There's good reason for that. Christians do not deny that life's harshness may bring deep waves and high winds. Things can happen in a heartbeat, in a moment turn lives upside down. But our strong confidence, however, lies in trusting that Jesus is in the boat with us. If there isn't anything we're ever going to go through in life that Jesus isn't a part of, and that his love is strong enough to hold us secure forever. Years ago, LCOS had, uh, was blessed in an ongoing connection with a Christian artist who did faith-themed sand sculptures on the beach at Ocean City. We convinced him to do one of those sculptures here on our property, and he did. 
And some of you may remember, but the first one that he did was this incredible carving out of sand, no less. It looks like the front of a boat, disciples cowering inside, Jesus standing there, and the caption, be not afraid. We received lots and lots of comments from the community saying how inspiring that sand sculpture was to them. You even had it lit up at night. But one of the best comments I think we got was from a nurse at Needy Hospital. She wrote us a note. And she said, you know, after I get off my shift at Levy every night, I drive down to your church and I just sit in my car and I look at the sculpture. For her, it was a simple reminder that even though fear is a powerful four-letter word, the love that God has for us in Christ is more powerful still. May that thought be in your heart and your mind to stay in every day. Take heart, Jesus says. It is I. Be not afraid. Amen.
peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I encourage you to enthusiastically share that peace with each other. <laughs> Sharing the peace takes this long. That's a good sign. <laughs> so, in our prayers today, remembering lots of folks, uh, we pray for Victoria Cornick, friend of Marilyn Davis. We also pray for Kim Schrock, former member, now in Arkansas, uh, who is dealing with breast cancer. We pray for Beth Hinchman, a uh, friend of Hess Gillespie, going in for stomach surgery. We pray for Gail Calloway, who is hospitalized and recovering there at DB. We pray for Judy Steinman, who will be going in for surgery on Monday for a broken finger. We pray for Shirley Nestor, who is now dealing with a fractured vertebrae. We pray for Louise Dassler, still recovering from home, at home from a TIA. We pray for Helen McLucas, this is Susan Gregory's mom, recovering from surgery. 
Dylan Duckett, the grandson of Kathy Holster, still recovering from a severe automobile accident, and also Roger Starr and Arnold Fish, both of whom are dealing with cancer. For those who are mourning, we pray especially for the family of Link Dirks, a friend of Jean McCory. Uh, Link died, I think, yesterday morning. So we pray for his family, especially his wife, Lorraine. For those marking milestones, we pray for Lana Brown, Shirley Nestor, Jennifer Parnell, Al Denuncio, and Bob Barnes. And there are no anniversaries this week, so nobody got married here in August. <laughs> so, but, uh, so for these and others, uh, we pray. <clears throat> God of grace, we step lightly into a new day, unsure of what's out there, and still wondering and still anxious about things that could be out there. We ask for grace to shower down upon us and to give us that quiet confidence and courage, believing and trusting that you're in the boat with us, and wherever the day goes, you're with us, and your love for us is great. Help us, Lord, to lean on that love and to trust in that love and to find strength because of that love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We pray, as always, for the church, especially for the witness of Christians across the world. We pray for those who are under persecution today because of their faith. We pray that you would give them continued courage and resolve to be strongly strongly persistent in their witness to your love so that others may be drawn into your embrace or in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for each member of this congregation that they may fully understand what their baptism calls them to do and to be. Help them to recognize that they are an ambassador of reconciliation, a symbol of God's grace in a broken and a hurting world. And help them through their words and actions to display that grace <clears throat> and everywhere they go and to everyone they see. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for a broken and hurting world, especially places today where there is bloodshed, where there is war, where there is conflict. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine, Sudan, Palestine, Ethiopia, and other places across the world, O oh God, where people cannot seem to get along. We pray that somehow your, your gospel of peace may find its way behind the stubborn hearts and wills of people and bring a reconciling hope. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our own country, which is filled with lots of opinions, lots of thoughts, lots of judgments, lots of words. We pray, O oh God, that somehow you would be in these words, and especially that you would be with those whom we have elected to serve us. May you give them with a double measure of compassion and grace, enabling them to listen more than speak and to learn how to work together for the sake of the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for many people on our minds and on our hearts. Today we pray for Victoria, Victoria. Shirley, Shirley, Louise, Louise. Helen, Helen, Dylan, Dylan. Uh, Roger, Roger. Arnold. Arnold. We pray, O oh God, that you be with him as only you can be, and also with Kim, Kim. with Beth, Beth. with Gail, Gail. with Judy. Judy. In whatever place they are in, O oh God, come near to them and surround them with the peace that only you can provide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are mourning. We pray for the family of Link. Amen. May you gift them, and especially his wife, Lorraine, with the certainty of the resurrection, hope, and promise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those marking milestones. For Lana, Lana. Shirley, Shirley, Jennifer, Jennifer. L, L, Bob. Bob. As they begin to look back to see what has been, help them with courage and joy to look at what yet might be knowing that wherever the journey goes with them, you are there with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Each one of us, O oh God, comes into this place with other people on our minds and on our hearts. And we are bold enough now to shout those names out loud, trusting that you hear and that in your way and time you answer. So on this day, we also pray for
people are precious to us, O oh God. Come near to them. May they know the certainty of your love and of our love as well. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Be with us, Lord, as we come into this place, and now as we prepare to exit this place, may we leave stronger than when we came in. May we leave being reminded again of how strong your love is through word and sacrament and the fellowship of this people, O oh Lord. Come near to us. Lift us up and guide us, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may indeed the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be and abide with you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Indeed, serve the Lord. <laughs> 